behind is uh, this talk and the result that we present to you was presented uh, for the first time by Hans in uh, uh, phase 6 that it gives us the idea that the gravity waves generated by the tsunami propagation can create a strong perturbation in the ionosphere, and this kind of perturbation can be used for detection of a tsunami uh, from the space, you know, using satellite or radars and other other kind of instrument. So after this, uh, so we want to just get, give you uh, an idea about what is happening. So basically after the earthquake, uh, there is the tsunami generation. And so tsunami is a gravity wave. So it's an internal oceanic gravity wave. So it's a strongly coupled with the atmosphere where you introduce and create uh, internal gravity waves. This internal gravity waves is going up and are strongly amplified by the effect of the um, degrees of the density in the atmosphere. Uh, so when when they go up and they introduce they they uh, they cross the ionosphere they are they start to create perturbation by introduced by the movement of the, the particle uh, in in the ionosphere in particular they create perturbation in in the in the plasma density and uh, so this kind of perturbation can be visible when we have electromagnetic waves that is crossing that is crossing the ionosphere. And so if we can, for example, using satellite that send electromagnetic waves that is crossing the ionosphere, we can measure the total electron contents, so basically the electron density integrated from the satellite to the surface of the ocean if we, we use an altimeter, or from the satellite to the station if we use a GPS. And we can measure the perturbation introduced by the tsunami to the total electron contents of basically the density of, uh, of the plasma integrated along the along the, uh, the the path between the satellite and the station of the satellite at the ocean. So the, the first uh, observation that it was linked and demonstrates uh, that this kind of observation are possible uh, follows the Sumatra basically the Sumatra tsunami. And in that case, we had several observations in the Indian Ocean. In particular, I selected. Um, some that is uh, pretty interesting for me is one presented by Liu et al. in 2006 that he showed that uh, using several um, using several uh, stations, in particular all the stations that is presented here by triangles and different GPS satellites, he's observed that there is a ionospheric wave that moves at the same speed at the same speed of the oceanic wave on the ocean. So this is the first thing that you can observe between uh, the perturbation that is moving on the ionosphere at 300 kilometers of altitude and a perturbation that is moving on the surface of the ocean. Similar observation, for example, if we take in details the, the, the observation of Coco Island, uh, here we can observe the tidal gauge that is observing that is observing the tsunami and the collocated GPS station showing the total electron contact perturbation in the ionosphere at 300 km of altitude, we can observe that they show the same signature. We have this first arrival here, this second one here, and this bigger one here and here. So this has shown that the ionosphere is pretty sensitive to the structure of the of the tsunami propagation as more or less as as, as well as the, the, the ocean itself. So the key observation of the of the Sumatra tsunami was the two uh, altimeter satellite uh, topics uh, and uh, Jason. That as as you know, they observed the tsunami at the sea at the sea level. And if we model the perturbation uh, in the in, in the in the plasma uh, along along the tsunami propagation, you observe that there is a strong perturbation here and a second one here. They are crossed both by uh, the two satellites, so JSON and uh, Topex and JSON. And uh, we can observe here, for example, uh, the, the perturbation and uh, the, the, the modeling and the, the data that show the perturbation at sea level here and here. So black, da black, black is data and red is modeling. And here the, the observation in the ionosphere because uh, when we are observing uh, uh, altimetric data, we have to filter and observe the ionosphere too. So this is instrument is amazing because at the same time can show the perturbation at sea level and also the perturbation uh, in the ionosphere. We can uh, we can observe that we are trying to pretty well reproduce by modeling 
uh, the, the, the signature of the, of the tsunami in the ionosphere. There is just a little bit of shift between data and synthetics that is explained uh, by the absence of the wind in our modeling. But by the way, we are able to reproduce pretty well the data, and this is proof that we are understanding the the, the coupling phenomenon, the coupling method between uh, the tsunami, the gravity waves, and the gravity waves and the ionosphere. So this is one of the first things that we uh, understand about the tsunami propagation in the in the ionosphere. Second of all, we want. I want to put in evidence that we observe this perturbation here, this strong perturbation that is close to the magnetic equator, and this second one. So, another thing that we understand that starting from Sumatra and, and until today is that this effect is linked to the magnetic, uh, to geomagnetic field. In fact, if we have a normal propagation of the tsunami starting from the south to the north and one starting from the, from the north to the south, we observe uh, two different kinds of perturbation. One perturbation that is strongly located to the geomagnetic uh, equator and one that is strongly located a little bit off south. The count this is, is generated using two simple uh, tsunami waves that is moving from the north to the, to the south and, and from the south to the north, just put in evidence this difference uh, between the perturbations. So we are, we are right to, um, to put in evidence the effect of the geomagnetic field that is basically uh, present uh, by the Lorentz force in the coupling in the coupling equation between the gravity waves and the plasma. So this is uh, one second things that we are putting in evidence. So basically, the um, propagation of the gravity waves and the observation and the plasma is strongly linked by strongly driven by the geomagnetic inclination. So another uh, details that I want put you uh, show you and as something that has happened just after this uh, that we can generalize this observation of uh, of gravity waves linked to the tsunami by uh, GPS observation of a uh, ionosphere and I show you here three cases of the uh, tsunami in uh, Kurils 2006, Samoa 2009, Chile 2010 all these three uh, tsunami are observed using the GPS station in Hawaii and we are observing the perturbation that is linked to the tsunami arrival and in, in fact here I show a kind of autocrons that is linked to the tsunami propagation so basically the time here is the time of uh, the, the time of uh, after the earthquake less the tsunami propagation so the, to the, the travel travel time uh, the tsunami travel time so this means that the vertical line show perturbation that is correlated with the arrival time of the tsunami and we are you can clearly observe that there is this perturbation that is arrived um, with the with the tsunami so the vertical so this is a current propagation and in particular if we observe a uh, comparison between um, uh, the tide the the, the the dark buoys and uh, the, the the GPS you observe the also the not only the, the arrival time but also the waveform is pretty similar uh, for for different for the different uh, for the different tsunami and I'm sure if if the waveform is similar also <coughs> the um, the spectral signature of the, the tsunami and and the die uh, dark buoys is the same. So this means again that basically uh, the the ionosphere is pretty sensitive to the tsunami to the tsunami propagation as well as the ocean. So uh, today we are more interested to put in evidence what's happened close to the epicenter. This is uh, one of the major problem uh, because uh, close to the epicenter, basically the rupture is a kind of derap, so they generate uh, acoustic gravity waves at the same time. So we have many signals that is propagating, and so we are trying to understand if uh, this signal that we start to observe uh, more or less 10 minutes, 8 minutes after the tsunami, uh, the tsunami generation. Uh, can be linked directly to the tsunami or is probably linked directly to the source and we can try to understand if it is possible with the first uh, ionospheric observation understand directly the power flow of the tsunami and can so in this case give an help for the, the future tsunami warning system uh, using uh, satellite observation. So this, the same observation so close to the epicenter is also uh, happened during the Tohoku uh, event. In that case, we have a huge amount of data. Uh, you can see clearly here a, a wave propagation after the, the rupture that is going in all directions that is linked to the 
to the to the outfit directly that is linked to the rival wave propagation that is also linked to the tsunami generation. So this is all the, all the waves that we are observing. There is several. So this is all the problems. So basically, the line give directly the speed of the waves, and we observe. Uh, so this fast waves that we observe here as the waves that is linked to the rally wave propagation that is moved at 3.5 uh, kilometers by second. And after we are this wave, strong wave that is present here, here, that is basically uh, linked to the tsunami propagation. But what is we don't really, uh, we are trying to explain now and we are focalizing is in the, in the waves that is linked uh, Around around here. So one of the points that I want uh, put in evidence that I'm trying to put in evidence right now is uh, uh, how we make, can make the difference between a wave that's this linked to the tsunami and that's probably here and this wave here. So how we can uh, define the limits of ones and start to understand that the second one is generated by by the tsunami because basically there is no no separation between the two. So one, we can directly image that also the perturbation here is linked to the tsunami. So to try to understand this, I analyzed a little bit the equation of the of the tsunami and if we, uh, of the internal gravity waves linked to the to the tsunami propagation. If we, if we take the dispersion curve, we can compute the vertical and horizontal velocity, uh, basically of the internal gravity waves that is moving close to the to the tsunami, and we can uh, we can uh, compute several times. Basically, the times of uh, that take a gravity waves to arrive uh, at the altitude. Uh, for example, to arrive at 250, 300 kilometers, we need more or less 45 minutes. So this means that we cannot observe in the ionosphere a perturbation uh, linked to the tsunami that has arrived before for five minutes. Uh, at that time, so basically when the gravity waves arrive at 300 kilometers, uh, the distance that, that the gravity waves have from the epicenter is more or less 500, 600 kilometers. So this means that in the first 500 kilometers, the waves that we are observing is linked to the source. And it's not linked to the tsunami propagation because uh, we can start to observe gravity waves linked to the tsunami only after 500 kilometers. And the last point that we cannot, we can. Uh, compute the last time that we can compute using this equation is basically the difference uh, in, a, in a vertical observation time. In the sense, uh, when we are observing the tsunami at the sea level, how long, how long after we can observe the tsunami in the ionosphere? And this difference is more or less is dependent, is strongly dependent <laughs> on the periods of the tsunami, but is we can quantify this in more or less eight minutes for uh, ionospheric observation. So this means that uh, uh, in the past there was some observation, in particular in the paper of, uh, of Liu that I showed you before, is he make a, a, wrong, a wrong interpretation of the observation in the ionosphere because he measured eight minutes difference and so he believed that it's an acoustic wave that is going up in the ionosphere, but it's not because it's, it's not taking account the horizontal velocity, so the difference here is, is, is is more uh, linked to this horizontal and vertical and vertical velocity. So this also this this last um, this last timing, uh, this last computation here, the, the difference between uh, the tsunami at sea level and the tsunami in the ionosphere can explain clearly that we are observing a gravity waves and not an acoustic waves as it was supposed in the past from op some observation. So this kind of observation uh, now is analyzed uh, by several papers, and and they show perturbation not only in the GPS but also in this uh, other kind of uh, uh, ionospheric sounders. And today, thanks to the to the Toku uh, to the Toku uh, tsunami uh, to Oku earthquake, we have a new uh, observation. So not only by uh, GPS altimeters, so basically making an integration of the ionosphere sphere, but we discovered for the first time that it's possible to observe uh, the tsunami um, the tsunami internal gravity waves in the ionosphere uh, by using a higher glow camera. So basically what higher glow camera is showing is showing uh, basically the image. The camera measures the photons emissions and this photons emission is proportional to the density of O plus. So we are measuring uh, basically the, the plasma density at 250 kilometers of altitude where we have the maximum of ionization of O plus. What we, you can observe here is the camera is located in one volcano Y. We are observing a, a wave that is arriving uh, close to the tsunami. And uh, so to, to 
to demonstrate that this wave is, uh, is linked to the tsunami and it's not just a grounding wave that is moving in, in, in the ionosphere, we, we made a modeling again. And so you have here the tsunami at sea level and the gravity waves that is moving. And if we take the, the, the surface at 250 kilometers and we compare uh, with the data, so here we have the vertical uh, displacement of the gravity waves. So this is the modeling and this is the gyre glow observation. We can observe in both this uh, Y uh, signature here that is present in both signal and uh, 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 in observation and the modeling. And we also observe this this uh, bigger perturbation that has arrived here, this first wave. And what is fun, it is, uh, it is amazing, and this wave here arrived before the line of the tsunami at the sea level. So this is what's surprising uh, at the beginning, because uh, it said, how is this possible that basically the, the, the internal gravity waves arrive before the tsunami, uh, as, as basically the, the, the horizontal velocity of the internal gravity wave is always as lower than the tsunami itself. And I finally, I finally analyzed the, the problem and, and I put in evidence that this, this problem is, no, this, this advantage in the same times is linked to, to the fact that the tsunami going to close to the, to the coast, it, it goes low, so it changes speed, but the internal gravity waves that is already generated don't change their speed. And so basically the gravity, you can observe that the gravity waves arrive before the tsunami at the sea, at the sea level. So, so now we can, we can uh, improve our concept of, uh, of the internal gravity waves detection by uh, ionospheric sounding and so we can add the GPS and the altimeter, we can also add the aerial camera and we are uh, today uh, trying to understand if it's also OTH radar can detect this kind of perturbation. So what OTH radar do? They send electromagnetic waves as low waves that is reflected by the ionosphere, right to the ground, is backscattered by the ground, or, and go back to the radar. And so we have, can try to measure the perturbation that is in two in, in, induced by internal gravity waves propagation in this uh, OTH radar uh, signal. So we are to, to try to demonstrate it. We just make a simple modeling. So we have a tsunami that is propagating uh, in the direction of the OTH radar, and we are uh, putting some line, some some ray tracing inside the ionosphere, perturbed and not perturbed, and we are observing here the point of reflection. So this is the next slide. So here you have the reflection point of the all electromagnetic waves that is sent by uh, the radar that is here. So this is the reflection point. This is a tsunami arriving, and this is the case without tsunami. So we have just the evolution of the ionosphere. And you can observe that the, the, the electromagnetic waves are strongly uh, perturbed by the presence of the gravity waves. And what we can, uh, so the, the idea is, it's possible that basically also if we have a 3D observation, because we have several, several electromagnetic waves that send at the same time, so basically the, the emission beams is pretty broad, so the question is, we can arrive to extract some information about the tsunami, so the, the, the answer is yes, so if we observe the synthetic signal perturbed and not perturbed, and we can make a comparison, what we can at present observe is this perturbation and the periods of this perturbation, the major period that we observe is exactly the period of the tsunami that we are put uh, inside our simple model. So this is just a first step. Uh, because at the present there is not uh, observation of the OTH radar uh, a signal linked to the tsunami, so we need we need to to to, to wait uh, to have for maybe next observation to validate uh, uh, not numerically but with the real data this this observ this kind of uh, observation. So I want to conclude um, my talk just saying that. Uh, the coupling mechanism between the tsunami, the neutral atmosphere, and the plasma is well explained. And also, if we have some difference between synthetic and data, we are uh, pretty much an, a, a, a good uh, coupling between the tech, obser tech observation by altimeters and GPS and also higher glow data. So the, 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 GP the GPS receiver and the altimeter show clearly that the ionosphere is pretty sensitive to the tsunami structure and the tsunami propagation as well as 
the tsunami uh, propagation at the sea level. And so this, this observation is clearly explained in the far field. And now we are focalizing in the observation in the near field, because in the near field, uh, we know that we have um, competition of different waves that is created. Some says internal acoustic gravity waves is created by the source directly. And some uh, acoustic waves are created by Riley wave propagation. And some uh, gravity waves are created by the tsunami. Anyway, we are defined that uh, between uh, uh, 40, 45 minutes and before 500 kilometers, we cannot observe signals that is linked to the to the tsunami. And anyway, there is observation that appear eight minutes after the rupture, and this mean, this observation is more linked to the source. And finally. Uh, there, you know, in general, different uh, different uh, remote sensing of the tsunami by uh, ionospheric sounding is possible by a ground observation or uh, a satellite observation. With, uh, for example, we can image to have an onboarded camera, aerial camera, and really map the tsunami propagation in the in the atmosphere. And so. I want to just give you the, the perspective that we can maybe in the future use use this uh, ionospheric observation to help the tsunami warning system and tsunami uh, detection. So I give you the last image that is some uh, OTH radar, and I would like to thank you. It's pretty simple. Uh, yeah. I, can, I can show you later the equation in detail if you want, but basically, uh, when the tsunami is moving, as uh, is, is a gravity wave, so by dynamic coupling, they yeah. transfer, they transfer the basically the vertical displacement to the atmosphere, yeah. and this 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 displacement create a gravity wave also in the atmosphere. You can simply image that there is uh, the wave and the atmosphere is cooling down. Yeah, but uh, geometrically, I can imagine yeah, some coupling. Why does this geometry cause some of the Yeah, they, 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 they create observables because as I as I show you here, so basically Is that due to some uh, chemical reaction? Yeah, no, so basically basically there is uh, there is a, um, a transport effect. The the neutral displacements. Basically the neutral displacement introduced by the gravity waves uh, make the transport of the yachts. There is interaction between neutral particles and the yachts in the ionosphere. So there is a movement of the yachts that create perturbation in the yacht's density. And the yacht density creates perturbation in the electron density. OK. I guess I need to take a look at your bed. Thank you. But is that due to some um, uh, scattering effect? Uh, uh, ions and yeah, I can I can maybe show you some equation if you are more you know if you have to be more clear. So. Yeah. One way to look at it, which is rather simple, is the fact that the tsunami does not stop at the at the surface of the sea. Sure. Exactly. Yeah, it's, a, it's exactly the same wave. They only change. They only change the density, basically. And if you have exactly, if yeah. you have a radio wave, you will have a change of density somewhere, and then you will have a change of density. Exactly. Aspect. Yeah. And that change it's of density going to affect the GC. It's basically the same wave that is propagating. Is it's not it's not an electronic signal. Is is a perturbation in the in the electron density. So they are just changed. It's not it's not an electronic or an electromagnetic perturbation that we are creating. We are just creating uh, a difference in the electron density. 
after the difference of the uh, Germanian intensity um, create variation in the in the reflect in the refraction index. So uh, the magnetic waves that is crossing the ionosphere, uh, they are affected by the density of electrons because a uh, refraction index is affected by the density. And so this is change the wave propagation basically. Yeah, basically, yeah, basically the density in the ionosphere is disturbed by the gravity wave propagation or in general by wave propagation. And you can observe this by electromagnetic signals. There was another question? Yeah, I just have a, uh, I don't know if my talk about. Uh, so, Giovanni, in your uh, simulation of the Indonesia uh, tsunami, you said there was the lead and you counted for that because of the winds. I was wondering if you used a static source or a kinematic source for the uh, rupture. Because that rupture lasted something like 10 minutes. And I've seen tsunami models used for delay models that have a similar delay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for the question. As it's pretty interesting. Basically, we uh, uh, I think that the, the delay that we are observing is more linked to the wind uh, because we are we have the same. Uh, we we try both. For example, uh, not in the case of Sumatra, but in the case of Tolku, uh, we try both cinematic and uh, and the static uh, uh, source. And the, basically, the major difference that we are observing is probably linked to the to the uh, to the wind effect. Last question is uh, why do you have the magnitude 9.3? Where? For the for the Toku earthquake. Uh, no idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very nice talk. Um, Thank you. I have heard of um, slight slight sleep earthquakes such as um, the one that was caused in that one in 2012 in Israel uh, that generates tsunamis and also gravity waves and things like that. So do you remember, do you have comments on this specific earthquake in uh, April 2012? Uh, not really, I didn't, I didn't have the time, did, yeah, the time to check this, if we have a strong observation in the atmosphere linked to this. Yeah, but anyway, it's, it's going to be interesting to observe it. Uh, there is also some major observation linked to this. Yeah. Okay, I think we should uh, go on the next talk. Yeah, sure. Uh, Thank you. I have one too, but maybe I can use this one. Sure. So we switch from the other one. Sure. We can meet the